We're out here on a beautiful evening in September on the banks of the Bow River. And many people don't know what they have here in this absolutely world-class fishery. And there are lots of people both here and around the world that come here to fish. And this is one of the best places to do it. For today, hopefully introduce some would-be fly fishers by learning how to cast a little bit. And that's really what we're gonna do tonight is just uh, hopefully give people a few pointers about casting. Because catching a fish is the name of the game. So we'll just tie a little something on the end here to give us a little bit of weight, give us something to go with. so that we can start casting. So for those people who have casted a certain amount, it's how much you cast. Practice, as they say, makes perfect. Perfect practice makes it even better. There are four uh, pretty basic kinds of grips that you hold on your fly rod. And the first one is gonna be uh, what most people have learned, a lot of people have learned, me included, is the thumb on top grip. I keep the heel of my hand always fairly close to the reel seat because that's where it gives you a, a control. And the thumb on top grip is just that. Your thumb is opposite your reel and it just sits right on top of your rod. And that particular grip there is really good for applying power. The second grip is called a key grip. And just like when you're holding your house key, it's very much like when you're holding your rod. The rod is like this. Your thumb is on the left side, uh, right finger, index finger on the, on the uh, thumb on the left side, index finger on the right side, and your other three fingers just curl around underneath the cork. This is quite a good grip for power as well, and it also allows you now to move your hand in a different way than the thumb on top grip does, so that you can actually uh, get more uh, movement behind your shoulder because uh, sometimes you will want to do that, especially once you learn how to cast. Uh, you'll need to lengthen out your cast. Uh, you'll want to cast farther, most likely. In some situations, uh, it will be required to make a long cast. The third grip is called a three-point grip in which your thumb goes alongside the left of your rod, your forefinger goes along the right side of your rod, and your middle finger holds the rod. So that you actually, the, the last two fingers, you can curl them around your rod, but this particular grip uh, will give you more finesse, it will allow you to do better presentations, uh, it won't allow you the same kind of power that a key grip or a thumb on top grip will. But all of these things are just a function of fly fishing. And just simply seeing them, knowing them, is going to make you a better fisher. The last one is the forefinger on top. And that grip, I know, is favored by some excellent fly fishers, guys that I really respect, um, such as Gary Borger. This is the one that he favors the most. This is a grip that is going to help you with your presentation. Uh, especially with light lines, with light tippets. Uh, this it, this uh, tip grip can also be uh, a fairly good grip if you're applying power, but it's probably not as much power as you will with either a key grip or a thumb on top. Those are the four basic grips um, that will help you along at least understand a little bit about how to hold your rod and holding your, with the, uh, palm of your hand with the heel of your hand fairly close to the reel seat because you don't want to hold your rod too far up the cork because the it will overbalance your reel will make a difference in how your rod vibrates and the vibration of the rod is going to affect how your line works because the first rule of fly fishing the hard and fast rule of fly fishing is that line is going to follow the rod tip no matter what you think say or do Wherever that rod tip goes, the line is going to follow. And if there's one word to sum up fly fishing, it is C-O-N-T. 
C-O-N-T-R-O-L, control. And all of the control resides with you. You control your hand, you control your wrist, you control your arm, your shoulder, your body, how you move, and all that makes the rod tip do something. And the line is always gonna follow the rod tip. If you move your rod up and down, the line is going to follow. If you go in a circle, the line is going to follow. If you go back and forth, the line is going to follow the rod tip. I know there are casters out there who will just say that it is the 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock position, and that's really all there is to casting. And that may not be a bad place to start, but it is not really um, how casting works. One of the uh, major things that we need to do in fly fishing is how to get the fly line out there. Fly line needs to be picked up, and your rod needs to accelerate, and it needs to go from slow to fast, and then it needs to stop. And that stop has to be a positive stop. It needs to stop, and you need to hold your rod there long enough for your line to unroll. Because if it does not stop, the rod cannot impart energy from itself into the fly line. And that's what casts the fly line. The rod casts your fly line. All you do is supply the control to your rod so that you can actually make that line do what you want it to do. Okay, here's a demonstration of casting where you pick the line up off the water, the rod loads, it bends, and you flick it, the rod stops, and the rod tosses the line behind you. In the same way, when you come ahead with your cast, you come ahead slowly at first, you accelerate, your rod goes from slow to fast, and it stops, and the line lays out in front of you. Your accuracy will get better, and you will be able to put your fly where you would like your fly to go. And sometimes fish can be exceptionally picky, and they will not rise to anything unless it is right on top of them. Uh, the name of the game in fly fishing and casting is control. What you do with your hand, how you do it, how you make your rod act and react is going to determine how whether your fly line actually gets out or not. And what you want to do is get your rod tip to actually go on a fairly level plane. And even though sometimes your hand is going up and down, your rod tip is actually moving on quite a flat plane. And that is gonna make for good casting because then the line is going to follow your rod tip and what you're going to have is your line going in a fairly straight line forwards and backwards and forming what we call a loop. Loops come in various shapes and sizes. The best loops are all very narrow. That comes from applying power at the right time, stopping the rod and letting the fly line unroll. Unrolling makes it loop. Um, when you open your loop up, when you use your fishing rod and you go like this, your fly rod, that opens your loops up. And what happens is it takes away from the aerodynamic shape of a loop. A loop needs to be narrow to be able to fly through the air the best. And when you lose control of your hand and your rod starts to open up too much and you go like this too much, then all that's gonna happen is your fly line is going to crash in front of you, behind you, and you are simply going to be frustrated. So what you need to do is control your hand, control your wrist, so that when you bring your rod into the back cast, it comes up, and for the majority of the time, I would use what's called an elliptical cast, uh, simply to keep your line from crossing most of the time where I cast, bring it back, back cast off to the side a bit, you can certainly use your wrist a certain amount, but then you have to stop the rod, not over rotate your wrist, so that when you begin your forward cast and your line straightens out behind you, now you have a spot, the weight of the fly line is going to do what's called loading your rod. And loading your rod is simply the rod bending. And when the rod bends, it does something. And you can see the rod bend, you can see what happens, and simply for the sake of, of showing you what's going on, I'll keep my rod tip in the air. 
a little bit more because uh, for the majority of the time that you're out fishing, in order for your rod to load, the tip probably needs to be a lot closer to the water to give you some um, line, what we would call, or I guess what I would call, line stick. That provides your anchor, it provides something to let your rod load and then unload. And when it comes out behind you, you do the same thing now because it is the weight of the fly line that loads your rod and allows your rod to unload and cast the fly line. Uh, one of the other things that I would say is that would be a good habit to get into is keeping your hands relatively close together. That way you do not introduce slack into the fly line because slack in any cast is bad. Slack is not a good thing. When you pick up the line off the water, you accelerate, you bring the rod back, your hand stops, the rod stops, and the line unfolds behind you. And a mirror image of your back cast is your forward cast. Where your rod comes ahead, it uses the weight of the line to load the rod, and when it comes ahead and stops and cast. So we'll go with that, and that casts your line out. One of the things that you'll notice about casting right now is that I'm using a fairly short stroke. Short cast, short stroke, long cast, longer stroke. Short stroke, and in many cases, you don't need to go past 12 o'clock to make a very usable cast. The fact of the matter is, is that most fish are caught within 30 feet, at least here in stream fishing, most fish are caught within 30 feet of where the caster is standing. But when you do want to lengthen out your cast, then you have to lengthen out your arm stroke as well. And for exceptionally long casts, the same applies where you just simply move yourself and at the same time, you can rotate your body, you can use your shoulder, your back muscles to put more effort into it, and that certainly will make a long cast. Casters using a single-handed rod have well been known in making casts in excess of 120 feet. That's a long cast. One other aspect of fly fishing in order to make a longer cast is what we would call shooting line. Shooting line is when you have a loop of line at your reel in your hand and you use the effort or the energy that's in your fly line to actually pull the, all of this line out of your hand to make the fly line go out farther. When you come forward on your forward cast, the rod needs to stop positively. Then you release the line and once that nice loop is rolling out there, the energy in that fly line will take all of this line and turn it into a much farther cast. And that looks something like this. And when shooting line, don't put your rod tip too close to the water first. Let the rod tip stop and let the line go out. And you can lengthen your cast out a great deal simply by shooting line. When your rod comes ahead, it has to be a positive stop first. Then you release your line, and then the line will shoot. And now we'll talk a little bit about arm movement and how your arm is moving as you're casting. Uh, you can see that my arm, my elbow, is staying fairly close to my side so that my arm is actually not moving that much. And the longer that you want to stretch out your cast, the more you are going to have to move your arm. However, for the majority of casting, you're going to need to keep your elbow relatively close to your body and let the rod do the work. Your hand does some of the work, your wrist does some of the work, 
But in a short cast situation like this, when you're casting 30 or 40 feet, the rod is going to do almost all the work. If you stretch your arm way out and your rod begins to move, it will do things like this and then your line will crash. And that's not what we want to do. We want to open up our, our loop. There are certainly times when you do want to open a loop up, such as when you want to make a softer presentation. That simply means that you want your fly and line to settle on the water more softly because you might have spooky fish somewhere. So in that particular instance, yes, you do want to open up your loop. But there are all of those nuances, and those are the things that we learn as we go along. As we learn to use our hands, our bodies, our shoulders, how you stand is important. Uh, for me, as a right-handed caster, when I am in the river, I usually always stand uh, with my left foot in front of my right foot. Sometimes I will stand slightly off to the side, but you're generally speaking, much better off and more accurate as you face your target, if your shoulders are square to your target and your target is out in front of you, wherever you happen to be, the 180 rule applies because what is out behind you has to go 180 degrees in the opposite direction. And that 180 rule is one of the hard and fast rules. Not totally, but it works very much that way. You can change your cast by moving a little bit in an opposite direction. Sometimes you will do that by false casting and moving in another direction. But you're still, the 180 rule applies. When you want to cast, the line needs to go out in one direction and cast in the opposite direction. When the rod comes to a stop, in order to make a better presentation, and almost all fly fishers do it, the rod tip will drop. But even though it almost always looks like one single motion, that rod has to stop and then lower. And that is certainly some of the things that you need to know to become a fly caster. I certainly did not cover all of the ground that could have been covered, but those are certainly some of the basics. I hope this helps. And uh, have a great day and thank you.